Hello friends, welcome back to a brand new video. If you are new here, my name is Rebecca and today I'm sharing with you guys some glass painting DIYs. I had so much fun doing these, they're really easy and I was able to use a bunch of Dollar Tree items. Hi Kimchi! Oh, he heard me talking out here. <laughs> I'm also gonna bring you guys along for our trip to Savannah. We took the girls to Savannah, Georgia for a little bit of an excursion, a family adventure. So that was a lot of fun. It was our first time there. And I will add that in later on in the video. But let's go ahead and jump into our glass painting DIYs, candle holders and drinking glasses, and also just like some home decor <laughs> ideas. So let's go ahead and jump right in with these painted glass DIYs. So I found this glass jar with the little um, glass stopper lid in the top um, at Dollar Tree. And I thought it was so pretty and I've been using it for a while, just like that. I've used it as a vase, I've used it as decor, but I decided that I wanted to see if I could kind of paint it and change the color. I'm going to be taking some Elmer's clear glue and putting in a drop of some food coloring and I went with the pink one and look how bright this looks. It really looks like a beautiful bright fuchsia or magenta color. You just paint that all over and then kind of set it upside down and let it dry. Be careful when you're doing this. You want to maybe put it on a plate or something disposable and make sure that you just protect your work surface but a lot of the glue is going to drip and run off so when it's dry you're going to be left with these beautiful beautiful colored glass. It's very like transparent or translucent and I just love the effect and you can do this in any color to match your decor. I actually did an, like this little vase here that I have my dried florals in along with this pink decorative glass. Now, I want to also do some glass candle holders from Dollar Tree and they had these little votive holders which I got seven of them, I believe. And then we glued them together using some E6000 glue, which is just a great, I think it's an epoxy glue. It's really good for holding things like glass to get a better hold than hot glue. So you can totally do this with hot glue. Just, you know, be aware that hot glue doesn't stay together quite as well, but it's perfect if you plan to take apart your glass DIYs later. You'll be able to kind of get them apart if you do it with hot glue, but I wanted to actually make these more stable and secure for long-term use, so I went ahead and did this with the E6000. We've glued together this seam right here, and then right here we set one of these upside down and put the glue right here on this part and set it right down inside of this one. And then the last part is gonna to be to put this right up on the top here, so one will be a little bit taller than the other. And then I'm gonna paint them basically the same way, adding this food coloring into the Elmer's clear glue. And I did the pink one, and then I also did the blue, which I, it was kind of, I was kind of hoping for a little bit of a greener color, so I added in a splash of that yellowy orange, and it overall came out kind of a bit of a turquoise color. It's not quite as green as I was hoping. It's a little bit more blue. Set these aside to dry, and they you might want to leave them for a day, leave them overnight or whatever, especially depending on how humid it is where you are. We're in Florida, and it is a little bit more on the humid side, so most things that I'm painting take a little bit longer to dry than if you're somewhere where perhaps you have the heat on in a in a colder climate, you might have less moisture in the air and your product, your paintings or whatever you're working on will dry a lot faster. But anyway, once these are done, I love how they look. I can style them on my shelves. I'm gonna add in some of these LED taper candles. I think these are really pretty, but of course, even Dollar Tree has taper candles now and I saw them in a couple different colors there as well. I'll link the ones that I'm using down below and this is so easy and affordable just using glue and food coloring. Now moving on for the next one, I picked up a couple drinking glasses in Dollar Tree and I love how they have different shapes and sizes and styles and the first one here is inspired by one that I saw in Anthropology, and I'm using this gold glass paint and I tried with a little tiny paintbrush. I honestly felt like it worked better to paint on this glass just using the end of a toothpick. It was much 
easier to make like the small lines. I also did another more tropical version and for this one I took the pink, I did some little flowers here and added some leaves and just had fun decorating this. I was so inspired doing this little artwork here and painting on my glass. I cannot wait to use it. It looks so tropical and so fun for spring and summer. I'm just loving the bright colors and definitely can't wait to add this to my glass drinkware collection. It's just turning out so pretty. But basically for the flowers, you can kind of um, push a little bit of paint up for the top of your petal and then drag it down quickly in toward the center and it makes kind of this little swipe of paint and just like a little swoosh of paint and that's like one petal and I did five petals like that per flower just kind of pulling the little the little paint swishes in toward the center. I hope that kind of makes sense. You're going to want to let these dry before you add any kind of center to your flower which I came back and added a little bit of orange in there with the end of a toothpick and just kind of brush that in a little bit. You can also add in a little bit of yellow or some of the gold or maybe even a little bit of white paint and just kind of break it up, add a little bit of interest to the center of your flower. And then for the leaves also, I kind of did a similar um, swish idea with the paintbrush. And for this one, I kind of flattened the brush and kind of twisted it to kind of make a little swish like a, a fan like a half circle and then from there um, turned the brush on an angle and dragged out the rest of that swish to a point. So you kind of have like a, a fan that kind of swoops around into a point. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Um, that's probably the best way. I am also by no means very experienced at making leaves or anything like that. This was my first time. Actually, I think this was my first time doing a leaf, like a larger leaf shape. Once this is all finished being painted, set it aside to dry. And then basically we're going to let these cure in the oven. We put them into a cold oven, set it for 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and then and let them bake there for 30 minutes and then set them aside to cool. So here's how our glassware looks right out of the oven. It looks super good. Everything is hardened and dried on there. And my next test is going to be to run these through the dishwasher and see how they come out. So here they are out of the dishwasher. I love how they look. I think that the, the texture in the gold here, the lines are a little more visible when you do use the toothpick instead of a paintbrush, but all in all, it's still beautiful. And I just adore this tropical one. I think it turned out so pretty. I had a little bit of gold in the center of the flowers, but love how these turned out and I can't wait to use them. While you're watching, let me know where where you're from if you are if you're a viewer on my channel where are you from are you from the u.s or not um and if you if you are in the u.s or even if you're not like where's a place that you would love to vacation or somewhere you've been that you think just makes a great family destination maybe even just a day trip idea where are some vacation spots that you would recommend let me know down below in the comments. Now, last weekend, we spent a day in Savannah and actually, so we went on St. Patrick's Day and did not realize that the St. Patrick's Day parade would be such a huge event. So by the time we got there mid morning, mid to late morning, actually, there was no parking anywhere. We could not even get to the parking garages. Everything was closed off on the road. So it took us a couple hours before we were actually able to kind of find a place to park and really get on with our day here. It was a beautiful city to walk around. The oak trees with all of the Spanish moss are just incredible. We stopped at a little coffee shop to try out some of the food and pick up some iced coffee to take on our little walking adventure around the city. Check out the roots of this tree. They're crazy huge. And it's a really good thing that I kind of mapped out some of the things that we wanted to do ahead of time. Even though certain places like the Cathedral Basilica of St. John the Baptist was closed down, we were hoping to take a little tour through there. We were still able to walk by and see it, 
and also we wanted to go to the Leopold's Ice Cream, which is supposed to be like a really famous ice cream shop in Savannah. It was also closed down, so there was definitely tons of people there, so I'm not sure exactly why they closed. The places also had signs that there was no public restrooms, so it was a little bit of an adventure getting around. I'm not sure if it was the day of the week. Um, according to Google, those places should have been open that day, so not sure exactly why they were closed, but it was still really good that we mapped everything out in advance because otherwise I don't think we would have known where to go at all. So I had kind of mapped like the most efficient route to walk through the city in order to kind of stop by and see um, whatever things we were able to. Oh, how was the Fox and Fig Cafe? I am so stuck. <laughs> We've just been sharing some foods here and stopped in the Sentinel Bean. Was that the first place? Sentient. Sentient. I don't know why I keep calling it that. The Sentient Bean and the Fox and Fig Cafe. I loved the Fox Burger. It was amazing. And we're currently on our way to the Paris Market. So our path to the Paris market has taken us into a cemetery. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Paris market was also closed down, so we weren't able to take the girls in there. We did make it to City Market, which was really just interesting to see. Um, personally, we didn't find many shops there that were very appealing to us or the girls necessarily, but overall it was a fun experience. <laughs> We did end up stopping by a Ben and Jerry's because we had promised the girls ice cream from Leopold's and it was closed. And they did have one dairy free option, which was very delicious. So we still enjoyed doing that. Savannah is a beautiful city and I'm sure we will be back at some point in the future. They had a lot of their tours and restaurants and things centered around like ghost tours and stuff like that. If that's something that you're into personally, our family is not into that. But if that's something you're into, there might be more stuff that would interest you. Let me know if you've been to Savannah before and what are your favorite things to do in Savannah, Georgia? or what is on your list, maybe something from this video even that you would like to go by and see in real life. Um, also, I'd love your recommendations for any cities in Florida or Georgia that maybe we should check out next and make another little like family day trip. Let me know down below. As always, wishing you a beautiful and blessed day and I will see you guys soon in a new video.